Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of my Jeep CJ7 bumper build where we may actually build a CJ7 bumper. At least I'm hoping this is not going to turn into a three-parter. I'm still waiting for those big thick weld-through shackle mounts to arrive, but in the meantime, I'm thinking I'd really like to extend this and get it mounted properly. Now I set it over the existing bolt holes first to line up with the ones on the left, then to line up with the ones on the right. And when I put it on the ones, when I put, when I put it over line this side up, it's centered almost perfectly. It's maybe an eighth of an inch off. But when I put it over on these, it's half an inch off or more. So I need to extend this side out and move these holes over so it lines up. So this, at first thought, I thought this was quarter, but the more I looked at it, the more I realized it wasn't. This is a 3 16th plate. So I got a chunk of 3 16 flat bar right here, and I am going to use that, and I am going to make a U-shaped piece over here. And I'm hoping my little homemade press break, and I'll put a link above to part one of the Jeep build, the CJ build, and don't forget I made a rear bumper as well. I'll just put a link to the entire CJ my CJ playlist in that, and you guys can find the bumpers and whatever else. I got a lot of CJ7 videos at this point. You guys can pick and choose and look at what you like. But I'm also going to put a link to my little homemade press break here. So if you don't have a press break, but you have access to a Harbor Freight uh, press, you can make yourself a little press break here like I did. So we're going to get a chance to use that today too because I'm going to try and bend a piece up to fit that. So I'm going to get a piece of this cut. Now, it's not going to be the full width of this, I don't think. I think I'm going to wind up, oops, I think I'm going to wind up cutting a half inch off of that, but I'm going to bend it up the full width, and um, I'm going to see if how that works. So let's do that now. Let's cut a piece off and bend it. Okay, I have my piece cut, and I have my lines marked right on the inner crease of that bend. And um, what are you betting that that'll come out right? I'm not going to cry if it's not, but I am going to be optimistic, and I am going to think that that's going to bend perfectly beautiful for me, and I won't have to cut it and make it longer or shorter, but I'm certainly prepared to do that if necessary. Let's go over to the bender. Okay, here we go. I got it in on the line, ready to go. I put my square on it to kind of hopefully make sure I'm actually bending it square. And let's get the first bend done and let's see how that turns out. And if this doesn't hit 90, I can always massage it in the vise or on the anvil with a hammer. Either way, it'll be fine. That's down about as tight as we're going to go. Let's let it up and let's see how good a job it did. Sorry, you got to grab it with the phone hand. And... Well, I think that might have actually gone past 90. Let's take it over and set it next to the piece. And let's have a look. And I know the, the leg is going to be long, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that being long because then I can shorten it. Looks like I got it pretty square. Anything that's close is going to work for me. Let's look at my other line here. Boy, I'm liking, I'm liking my, where my lines are. I really am. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's going to work. What do you guys think? You think that's going to work? I think that's going to work. Let's go bend it. And let's line this up. Okay, it's in, it's on the line, and it's square. Let's go. All right, fully bent.
my springs could have been a little longer, but it works. So there it is. There's my piece. What do you guys think? What are the odds that I hit that perfect? I'm giving myself, I'm going to give myself 20% chance that it's perfect, a 30% chance that it's good enough, no, a 50% chance that it's good enough, and what's that leave? 30% 30, 30 chance that I'm going to have to cut it and fix it. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that, that. I tell you what, that is absolutely 100% perfect. I don't believe it. I swear, I, I mean, I'm looking right at it, so I gotta, but um, I'll, <laughs> that, <laughs> all right, I quit for the day because it can only go downhill from here. I'm going to trim that off, and you know what? I might tack weld that on. I want to grind it all down first so I have a nice groove to weld into. Okay, I have taken the appropriate amount of time to marvel at my magnificence or my magnificent luck, depending on how you want to look at it. I've cleaned the paint off. I've ground a nice bevel on all sides. I'm going to get this tacked up and then weld it on. Welcome back to another day working on the Jeep. Well, uh, no, it's pouring rain in the Sonoran Desert, so we're not going to be working on the Jeep today. But what I got done finished last time is I got, I'm going to walk out in the rain. Hey, I lived in the Seattle area for 19 years. If rain was going to kill me, it would have done it a long time ago. I did get the winch plate finished, and I got it set up and mounted and tightened down. And I'm thinking about, I had originally intended on welding my steel tube directly to this piece, but if I put it on the length I want, which is the same length of the back, it's going to overhang this, and that's just going to look weird. And I really don't want to trim it at an angle my, because I didn't do that to the back. So what I'm thinking I'm probably going to do is either just save this for another day, which means all that grinding was for nothing. Well, I mean, this is an original Jeep part, so I wouldn't throw it away. But I think I'm just going to put tabs out here and weld the square tube directly to it. Or maybe weld a piece of the short piece of the square tube to the square tube and then trim it to fit. I haven't made up my mind yet. And um, then I'm going to put in big, big gussets back here that um, bolt to these big bolts and weld to the back of the square tube. And I have my weld through clevis mounts that I think I'm going to put right in line with the frame for the best strength. And that's what I think I'm going to do. So believe it or not, it is still pouring rain and cold here in Arizona. I've been inside my little shop here laying out my rear bumper. Excuse me, not the rear bumper. The rear bumper's done. I'm laying out the front bumper for the weld through shackle mount things. They came and for a receiver hitch. And this, of course, this isn't it. That's just an extra piece. Although I can't figure out why I shouldn't use that. And I might. I'm still battling myself on whether I should put a receiver hitch on the front bumper. I don't know that I'll ever use it, but it would be stupidly easy and cheap to do it right now, and I can't imagine why I wouldn't. Yeah, and I could actually use this piece left over from the other one. All I would really need to do is just take a small strip of metal and weld around it like they do. I certainly can't do any worse job of welding something like that on than Harbor Freight did. And at the same time, I'm testing, I'm doing my review of the little Vivor diesel heater. It's sitting over here happily chugging away, and even with that great big draft under the door, it is still making it warm in here, warmer anyway than it is, so I'm happy that that's there. That video may have already come out, I don't know, it depends on how long it takes me to do this, this bumper. So I'm going to get to cutting these holes, and yes, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the receiver hitch in it. So here it is, kind of just barely on. It's um, obviously just all tack welded and hasn't been painted, but I've got a couple of more, and you can see the, the mounts are on, and these bolt to the factory mount positions. I just got a couple of bolts sitting in it to kind of hold it in place, but that's how it's going to mount, and I, I admit it would be prettier without that um, receiver hitch on it, but I thought, you know what, it's so easy to put one in now, I might as well. So I got one more thing I'm going to do 
and that's these. I made these up on my little, the Harbor Freight press brake with my bending jig I made. And these are gonna go here on those two big bolts and then weld to the bumper. And the reason I put those extra, that extra bend in it was to keep it away from this gusset here that I put on the back of the weld through shackle mount. So now I gotta pull those bolts out and I gotta mark them and drill them. And I'm gonna kinda get them, everything clamped in place and then tack weld it. And then I'll pull it off and I'll weld everything up solid. Oh, and I still have to weld a ring around that. I'm sure, I have something floating around to do that with. Let's get to it. Okay, those brackets are on. They are not welded solid yet, but they are drilled. And they are tack welded on. Now, the only thing I have left... Oh, and one of the mounting tabs... These, except the two on the bottom, the one over there on the bottom, for some reason, is a half an inch off. And I don't know why, unless I just laid them out wrong. You know, when I did the back bumper, I bolted all the brackets in place. Then I brought the bumper out, clamped it, and tacked it. And it was a kind of a pain in the ass, but at least I knew everything was lined up. This time, I thought for sure I could do it. And you know what? Maybe I did, and maybe that's just off. I don't know. I think I did it wrong, but I'll find out when I get it inside. But other than, and it's only tack welded on, so it's not a big deal. And I've marked it. So I still got to wrap this with something all the way around it and move that bracket. And then it's ready for welding. And it's 3.30 now, so I ain't going to start any welding projects at 3.30. So that's going to be for tomorrow. Okay, I have done my final test fit on this. And I think the time has come to weld it. Now, something to note if you do this on your own. When I did the back bumper, I started on the back, if I remember correctly, and I did all the welds on the back. And then I flipped it and did all the welds on the front. And when I looked at it when I was done, it had a bow in it. It wasn't a lot, but I was afraid it was just enough to make the mounts line back, you know, refuse to line up. I was wrong. It was fiddly, but it did line up without any kind of adjustments. But I think I'd like to see if I can avoid that on this one. Since I don't have a fixture table to clamp it all down to, I'm going to weld some on the back, you know, on the back over here, then the front over here, and then the front over here, then the back over there. And I'll kind of alternate from front to back and side to side, and we'll see if that doesn't keep me from having it bow on me. Again, I don't think it would be enough to prevent it from going on, but let's see if I can't stop it. And it's not really noticeable, you know, unless you get down the back bumper and sight down it like that, it's not very noticeable, but let's see if we can avoid it. So I've got it doused down in anti-spatter spray. Let's get to welding. So here it is in all of its welded painted glory. And I'm pretty happy with it. I've made some Better welds in my life, and I've made some uglier ones. Those are all good welds. They're just, some of them aren't that pretty. But that's okay. I didn't expect it to be pretty. But it's all gusseted, welded, and ready to be bolted back on. So, let's go do it. One quick thing to note here is on this winch plate... This front bolt goes through this frame rail where it's open. So it's a short bolt and a nut on the other side, and it's only going into one thickness of the metal. Back here, it's going through that frame rail where it's boxed. And they gave these spacers to put in there so you're not pinching the box together when you tighten it. Unfortunately, in my Jeep, that's completely boxed in. I would have to cut a hole somewhere to get these in. And I really don't want to. I really don't think it's providing me any great extra amount of um, strength or anything. It just allows you to tighten that bolt completely. So what I think I'm going to do is I made these. And these are out of 3 16th plate. And yes, I plasma cut that. And wouldn't you think that a guy who can't cut a straight line to save his life would be able to cut a decent circle? But nope, I can't. So anyway... That's about as good as it gets with me freehanding a circle. So these are going to go on the inside of the frame rail. Obviously the winch plate itself 
and my bumper mount will protect the outside of the box but the inside I'm going to put these in and I hope that's going to let me put a little bit more tighten down on those bolts. So there it is all mounted down and tightened and I have to admit I like that a lot. It matches the one that I made on the back almost perfectly. The only real difference is is the bar for the spare tire carrier the way I mounted it and I put safety chains on the back and I didn't put the safety chain thing on the front of this because honestly I didn't really think it was necessary. I could always add it in later than I want and if I don't like the look of that big empty receiver I can always put one of those up there just something to cap the hole. I don't know that I think it's necessary but and I might make something that just fits flush or just 3D print a black plastic cap for it. Anyway, I'm really liking that. I'm super happy with it. The next thing on the Jeep is probably going to be to replace those round tube bars, side bars, with matching rectangular tube. Anyway, next thing for me is to get the Vivor heater video posted. I've got a bunch of video on that. I've just got to... um edit it and get it posted and then I got to clean up and then we're going to come and tackle the, the rock slider bars. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you know what? Please like it, hit the like button even if you didn't like it. I'd appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.